Hello and welcome to another episode of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this is the fifth of several editions outlining a complete red workflow for your Avid editing application. On the first episode of our series, we imported red footage into Avid with Avid's MetaFuse. While this workflow is simple and works very well on Windows, it's not the great solution on the Mac as MetaFuse is Windows only. So this week we'll import our red footage into the Avid using Red Cineax. It's a new transcoding and image manipulation software provided by Red free of charge. Think of it as something like Adobe's Lightroom, just for Red files. Now Red Cineax is currently in pre-release form and available from Red user. Link will be included in the show notes, of course. And make sure you have the latest build, at least build 104 or things might not work as I describe them here because I'm using build 104 here. Now, a big shout out to Vinnie Manier here who pointed out the ALE support in the new Red Cine X build. Now this is some very limited support of ALE and you know, uh, it will be supported more later uh, as Red Cine X develops, I think. But you know, you can use uh, Red Cine X for importing stuff into Avid at the moment and it works pretty well. I'll show you how it works. So this is Red Cineax and it's a nice, nice user interface, I think, and really looks like Adobe Lightroom, if you're familiar with that. Down below here, we have the timeline and here we have the clip selection window, a viewer and uh, some controls and a histogram. And you can also uh, add a lift and gamma and gain control. You also have a curve tool, just the way you would like it. So you can manipulate uh, the red images very, very well within this tool, and it provides some basic editing as well. Now let's look at this clip selection window, which is kind of the finder and the project window in one. So you have to drill down to the directory where your R3D files are situated or to the many directories where your R3D files are situated. And then you have a preview of them. And if you hover over them, they'll play, which is nice actually. And you can also watch them here in the viewer by just dragging them into it, hitting play, and it will preview in real time, that's pretty nice. Now once you're sure that you want the clip to be imported into the Avid, just drag it into a bin and do that with the other clips that you want to have in Avid. If you want all the clips, it's simple, just select them all, drag them into a bin and you're done. Sooner or later, you'll probably be able to edit them into the timeline. I mean, you can edit them into the timeline right now by double clicking. And this is where you'd be able to do some grading. Although you can use the grading controls on clips in the bin that are loaded into the viewer. But more importantly, you could pre-edit the footage. A problem with the timeline is when you export it, Red Cine X creates a big MXF of the whole timeline and not of the individual clips, which will make it impossible to conform later. So exporting the timeline is not a viable option, at least at the time of this recording. It might be different in later builds of Red Cine X. At this moment, all you can do is put clips in your bin and export all those clips. Open the export window if it's not already open, it's here under Windows, uh, Command 7. There's the export window, you can create a new preset, I'll call that, for example, DNX HD 36. Change the file format to Avid AAF and MXF. Set up to DNX HD 36, there we go. You should change the debayer settings because they're now to full resolution, which is great for onlining, but for offlining, this will take way too much time. So if you're using 2K, you can probably go with half debayering with 4K. I actually go with one fourth debayering. For offlining, this will be sufficient. Change uh, the output location settings to your liking.
hit OK. We have created this nice preset. And now here under export, you have the option to export everything in the bin, all the clips in the bin, which is what we want to do. The clip in the player or stuff from the timeline. Now again, great would be timeline with an EDL, but that doesn't work at the moment. So we have to stick with bin all clips. And now all you have to do is hit export, choose an output folder, which we are going to do. There we go. And it will start transcoding. Now this is the moment where you get a cup of coffee. But it actually runs very quickly, uses all your CPU as you can see up here. I have an old Mac Pro <laughs> with only four cores. Uh, but it's a nice workhorse. I'm sorry. This is, you see, that. that's what happens if you have a lot of time and nothing to do. You, you talk crap. See you later when, we, when we're done transcoding, right? Okay, we're back and uh, Resident X is done rendering all the files out. Now you might wonder where did we say anything about EDL and stuff. We didn't. Uh, Red Cine X just created one by itself. It's called Avid Export ALE, and it is situated right in the folder that you output it your stuff in. There it is, all the MXFs and AF AAFs as well. Now all you have to do is copy these MXFs to your media file folder and Avid will rebuild its media database and if it doesn't just close it and open it again and then it will. Now last steps just import the ALE there we are of course all the media is offline so what we have to do is relink it Relink. Uncheck relink only to media from the current project because Evid of course has no idea that the stuff that you just copied to its media files folder is from this project. And hit OK. And it's all relinked. And there's also just an awesome amount of metadata that has been transferred over and you can, of course, start working your way. Just the way you should. I found that uh, Red Cine X is much, much faster than Metafuse, so I would strongly recommend you use it. It is available for Mac and for Windows, and I think it's, pro it's providing a very, very neat and great workflow. And again, thanks uh, to, to Vinny for, for pointing that out to me, because... Uh, I asked on Red User and they said there's no EDL support in Red Cine X by now, uh, up to now. And it isn't actual, you know, it isn't really, you know, the, the timeline uh, does not export uh, EDL or import EDL, which is too bad, but I'm pretty sure that's coming down the pike. But at the moment, I think that exporting the whole bin option is just plain awesome and it works very, very well, uh, especially for offlining. So, um, Conforming with Red Cine X at the moment, not quite there yet, but I'm sure it's going to happen someday. And if it does, <laughs> you'll be sure to hear about it on this podcast. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. I'm sure it will be very helpful for all of you Red users out there. And if you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com or on the iTunes store uh, on the website. You can also um, watch past episodes. And if you have any comments or suggestions, just drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or a comment on the website. Any comment is always greatly appreciated. Um, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. If you'd like to know what kinds of things I do professionally, uh, check out editguide.de. This is where I promote myself for reasons that are actually unbeknownst to me. 
but uh, you know, you, you gotta have a website, don't you? Um, <laughs> so again, thanks for watching this episode and see you next week. Goodbye.